What's up, everybody? It's your boy True Element Seventy Eight returning to the podcast with the one and only reigning, defending Mondo Lucha Hall of Famer, the X Man Xavier Mustafa, and everybody's favorite narcissist, the Natural Chris Black. And today is a day in May. Who really gives a damn? We're here to talk about a show that nobody gives a damn about. I'd much rather be talking about AEW. Maybe we can sneak some of that in on this prediction show. What do you guys think? Because I don't really give a damn about WrestleMania Backlash. Do you guys? Listen, this is the most stupendous backlash in WrestleMania history. All right? Don't disrespect. <laughs> Look, I... Uh, it's sad I it's because... A preview of future WrestleMania. <laughs> It's sad because WrestleMania had so much momentum. They could have, they could have done a lot coming off of WrestleMania, but it's business as usual. It's back to you know what they do best, which is just shit in the bed as far as the television shows go and booking goes. And I see we have one, two, three, four rematches out of six. But that's what WrestleMania backlash really is. Is Matter of fact, it had so many rematches that they had to add WrestleMania to the backlash. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is um, very interesting that WWE is continuing to make the most money that they've ever made while delivering some of the worst product that they've ever delivered. But I guess hope is on the horizon with AEW selling out their Forbidden Door show in 40 minutes without a single match announced for it. I think that is a great sign for professional wrestling. They sold out a 20,000 seat arena. It's another million at, at over million dollar gate for them. Look, I understand. Look, if AW just isn't your cup of tea, y'all need to just stop hating. Like seriously to sell out an arena without announcing one single match. But yet you have WWE who have their whole card announced and they can't sell out a venue, like, give them the respect. Give them their credit. If you don't want to give them respect, give them their credit. All right. I, I hate to be the uh, the reality guy here. <laughs> let's, let's be real. All of the sellouts they've had in Chicago has been because it, they, they've been spectacles. Their first, what, two shows they had here when it was before it was – Officially, AEW, when they, they did the first show, sold out in minutes. Then when they actually became AEW and they did their anniversary show, whatever it was, sold out. The CM Punk show, showed out, sold out. Now you got this New Japan pro wrestling mix deal. But, so these are special events. But when they come here for, like, the random stuff, they're not selling out like that. Well, they haven't I'm, come here for anything <laughs> random yet. They deliver when they come here. Isn't I mean, but isn't it always supposed? Isn't it all supposed to be spectacles? Like, isn't Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam? Isn't that all supposed to be spectacles? Like I'm saying, like I'm happy that they they sold out, but let's make let's make no mistake, they're not selling out everywhere. But also, True that. that makes, to me, that makes it more impressive. They saturated the Chicago market, and they continue to sell out every time they go there. WWE, if they were going to New York. Actually, we already had that proven. WWE went to New York over like three times over the course of like a 45 day period and struggled every time they went there. Right. Chicago, Chicago could pretty much be AEW's like uh, Madison Square Garden. Like they know it's a good market for them. They know they're going to sell it every time they're there. Shit, I'd be I'd be booking in Chicago all the time. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to yeah. oversaturate it, but you know what I'm saying? If that's your biggest market, Shit, keep doing it as long as the people are buying. And one of the main things that, w that AEW is doing that WWE isn't doing, the casual fan does not exist necessarily anymore. That's going to pay hundreds of dollars to come to your show. Whereas AEW is catering to the hardcores who are willing to just throw their dollars at them. <laughs> Especially to see once in a lifetime matches or stuff that they never thought they would see, which all these relationships that AEW has built with all these other companies is giving these people. Now hold on. Now with that being said, they better deliver on this shit. Yeah, the Slamcasters will be in the building for the first time ever. 
Hopefully. All three of us. <laughs> at, least, at least two of us. Let's see how that goes. Two of us for sure. All three of us will be there. Well, the Urban Horseman will definitely be in the building. <laughs> Com- compliments of Xavier Mustafa. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have, hold on, we, we would have the entire Urban Horseman minus one. We would have all of the Brotherhood of Wrestling <laughs> minus one. And all of the Slamcasters probably minus one. <laughs> well, all, all, all three of us will be there. One just might not make it through the night. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but for real though, they need to, they better deliver because if this turns out to just be just a bunch of random tag matches to say, Hey, this is AEW versus new Japan. And I know it's going to, I know. Okay. This isn't, this isn't the time to talk about this. <laughs> oh, I didn't know where you was going, but let's go yeah, ahead. And it's knock not, out this, yeah. Um, it's not the time. <laughs> let's go ahead and knock out these, um, predictions so we can get the hell up out of here. Oh Lord. All right. So my prediction is Dr. Strange. Oh, wait, no, we're not talking about that one. Okay. <laughs> That's another, well, that's another podcast. You want to know something? What if he did go when he went through to see all the different results? Like, <laughs> he's like, in all those realities, WWE existed, and he found the one where it didn't. And he's like, yeah, that's our opportunity. Right. He goes through all the, the possibilities of this WrestleMania backlash, and he found none where it wasn't the shits. <laughs> I definitely, definitely encourage you guys to go see the Doctor Strange film if you have not yet. It is a probably the best horror movie that you will see. <laughs> it was good. It was definitely oh, good. I oh, you saw it? I saw I it tonight. Oh, wow. I wouldn't even Chris Black, Hey, you got oh. the applause on deck on your soundboard? Give, give Chris Black an applause. <laughs> oh, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> Man, what's going on with the slam casters? I feel like I went away and now we're all in sync for once. Like we're all going to a wrestling show together. Chris Black saw a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I see the all the big movies. Not usually let, in a timing manner. I just want to let the people know that uh there will be a uh, Doctor Strange the Multiverse of Madness podcast going up probably sometime this weekend. It's hard to get a whole bunch of people together, so we're working on it. Uh, that, that's not a bad thing because then you could do a completely spoiler um, review. So, or all of you or whatever. Oh, they're already up though. <laughs> all over. Yeah, there are some that are up. But, yeah. you know, when you rush and you don't get let it marinate. But you know, just don't just don't be the asshole who posts spoilers online. Just don't be that person. Oh yeah, I just had Moon Knight ruined for me because I hadn't uh, caught up on it and. I just oh. yeah, don't do that. They they they've got specialized discussion threads for that type of shit. Well, now it's kind of trash because of the algorithm on Facebook. It recommends pages to me that show me things because I follow a bunch of nerd shit. So, but anyways, what is the first match we're going to talk about? Uh, let's about? let's start the. You know what? I'm not going to go off the card that I see on line. Let's go with the shittiest match: uh, Happy Corbin versus Mad Cat Moss. Happy Corbin. Bad mm, Cat Moss. Because I don't remember who won the last time they wrestled. They hadn't wrestled yet. They just said they oh, were okay. back and forth. Remember yeah. when Drew McIntyre had the match with um with ha- Happy Corbin, and then he lost, and that's what led to this match. Okay. Um, I'm going with Happy Corbin. They need to keep this. I mean, fuck it. They're going to keep yeah. this feud going. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna keep it going, so I say happy Corbin. Because in WWE's eyes, that helps get over Mad Cat Moss more. <laughs> right. Yeah, they probably gonna feud through the summer. Eh, maybe not till SummerSlam because they got other bigger shows. But this is definitely not a one and done. And I can't see Mad Cat Moss getting the first win. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, next match. Oh, let's go with Bobby Lashley versus Omos. Almost a wrestler. Um, I'll let Mustafa go first on this. Uh, I think they're going to put almost over again. Again? Wait, let me go. Nope. No, Bobby won, and that led to the breakup. Yeah, they got to put him over this time. 
And then he also won the arm wrestling match. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Yeah, almost over. Uh, before you get your predictions, I saw a video of almost an interview. And I think dude said when he was 11, he was 6'1". Between 13 and 15, he was 6'5". And then had a growth spurt mm. or something. <laughs> God damn! Like six eleven. Like I'm look just to give y'all some, look to give y'all two some perspective. I'm six one. My son Miles, he's he's eleven. So that'll be like Miles being six foot one. <laughs> like, look, you dead. Oh, so he's like, no, Dad, you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> look, 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 you dead in the eye talking about give me some snacks. I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> But that's yeah. I saw that same interview and I was like, "Wow." Well, I'm also gonna go with almost because fifty fifty booking. Yeah, just imagine being that tall, trying to sit in the furniture they give you back there. Like you don't even realize because you're little. Everything is little. Like, yeah. the world is the size of you in school back in those days. But then you, when you go back as an adult, you're like, "Man, this furniture was tiny as hell." I don't, <laughs> Which is so probably why he's so fucking awkward looking now. Like he just seems like a very awkward person. It's actually funny. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. That's what sat in him saying um, over there in AEW. That guy is an actual athlete to be at seven four or whatever he is. Like it's crazy. He's a basketball player, isn't he? Was yeah, he was a basketball. Um, he was, was a yeah, he was a basketball player and a baseball player. Wasn't it the one in a million? Mm. Um, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, never mind. Yeah, he was the ba- he was the basketball player. The um, the guy in WWE was the baseball player. So, uh, one yeah. thing I would say, based off of what you were just saying, uh, True Element, I'm six foot, probably three, and all furniture is little, so I can't <laughs> even imagine <laughs> six foot and seven two trying to sit on some furniture. Nah. <laughs> Who's the biggest person you stood across the ring from that that you was just like, God damn, that's a big motherfucker. Not in the ring, but outside the ring, the Big Show. Mm. I didn't think the Big Show was gonna be that. Like I thought, cause you know, like I thought John Cena. I was well, John Cena was taller than I thought he'd be, but everybody else was little. Kurt Angle was little. Ray Mysterio was real little. Like everybody <laughs> small to me. So I'm thinking, like, you know, Big Show's probably, like, my height or something like that. No, nah, that dude is huge. Yeah. And I remember turning into a corner and almost running into him, and I'm looking eye to eye with his chesticles. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked up, oh, yeah. He was like, oh, shit, I thought you was Mark Henry. Was like, you know, you, <laughs> you get so used to guys being smaller than you would expect. But like Mick Foley, I didn't expect for him to be as big as he was. I'm like, holy shit. Like <laughs> I was expecting I don't know why, because you know, you can see the height difference when he used to wrestle the Undertaker, but I just didn't in my head I just didn't picture him being that big. But anyway. Yeah. All right, what else we got? Oh, uh, let's go with Edge versus AJ Styles. Edge. Edge needs it. His his um his crew is floundering. I I think they need to go with Edge as well. I would say because of fifty fifty booking, AJ Styles should go over. But no, I think he I I think Edge needs another win. I think he needs to. I think this is when a mystery person joins the group, which fucks AJ Styles. I'm with Rhea Ripley joining the crew. I'm I'm leaning more. Look. Everyone all was all like, oh, they did the too sweet. I, uh-uh. I'm side-eyeing that, like, Finn Balor about to drop him. <laughs> Hit him with the Pele kick. Yeah, like I, I, I'm Adam not Cole. buying it. I'm not buying it. If it's not Ciampa, it's definitely going to be um, Finn Balor, who turns. All right, what else we got? Let's go with Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Cody. Really? <laughs> You going with Cody too, Mustafa? Cody, but I think it's gonna be an attack or something like that. Uh, this one, this is the this is the only match that I'm actually interested in because I 
to be honest, I really don't know because you would think because, you know, that seems to be my thing today, 50-50 booking, you would think that Seth would get his win, his win back. But do you, the way they've been pushing Cody, the way they've been seemingly where they're going to push Cody, like it seems like all these rumors and he wants to wing, he wants to, you know, go to the wing eagle belt when he wins. That's a hell of an assumption, first of all. But uh, I don't think they want to give Cody Rhodes his first loss. And Seth Rollins losing really isn't going to hurt him. I don't want to commit to saying Cody Rhodes, but for the sake of just this show, I'm going to have to go with Cody Rhodes reluctantly. All right. What we got next? The women's match? Yeah, let's go with because uh, do you think the women's match is going to close it or do you think the six man tag? I think six man is going to close it. Okay, so let's go. Remember, it's Paul Heyman in the corner of Roman Reigns. Either he opens the show or he <laughs> Well, they could very well open the show too. But well, who knows? Who knows, actually, because Ronda's in there. And if the rumor was true, which none of us believe, that she threw a hissy fit about Stone Cold. She did. Not wrestling yeah, here. she didn't. But. Yeah, that was that was pretty much cleared up the next day by Rhonda. So, yeah, um, yeah. So, but let's go ahead and go with that one: Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey, an I quit match. Ronda Rousey has to win. Yeah, Ronda has to win, or otherwise, why is she getting paid? You know what? <sighs> I'm going with Charlotte. And the only reason why is because if they wanted Ronda Rousey to win, she would have won at WrestleMania. Why Why win the title in a who-gives-a-fuck pay-per-view? I'm sorry, special event or whatever they call it. <laughs> Premium live. There you go. Who, I mean, seriously, who, why? Why, not have, why wouldn't you have just done that at WrestleMania? But I get it. WWE doesn't always follow, you know, logic. I don't know. For some odd reason, I think that it's too predictable for Ronda Rousey to 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 win. I'm going with Charlotte. I think Ronda might win it at SummerSlam. I'm gonna go with Charlotte. Okay. No. No one's gonna try to argue that. <laughs> True elements on mute right now. Oh. Let's say I guess no one's going to debate me on that one. So, all right. Nope. Uh, I guess Jason. Let's died. let's uh, let. Uh, uh, okay, before we get into this last the six man match, is anybody shocked, surprised, disappointed that they're not going to do the unification tag team title match? I'm disappointed because it seems like that it wasn't their intention to ever do that match. So why even tease it? And isn't that one of Vince McMahon's no-nos? Like, you don't say it unless you're going to do it? Nope. His rule is that you don't tease a match that you know you can't deliver. So eventually, it'll happen, possibly. They know they can deliver it if they choose to, so he doesn't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen because, uh, from what I was reading, especially Fox, they want their own people. It fucking sucks. The, like their championships mean nothing. They'll have their own people. <clears throat> anyway, oh, oh my god, I just this I can't. I can't. A, this is what made me not give a damn about the pay per view at all. I was intrigued about the title unification, and then they went and did this. I was even intrigued when the rumor was that this was going to be for all the gold, even though that would have been a very predictable ending. Right. <sighs> Just, what but nothing f- being but nothing being on the line. The only belt being defended on this entire show, being the um, women's title. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't know. Okay, I'm shocked they couldn't figure out a way to get Oscar and um, Becky on here. <sighs> okay, so. <clears throat> This will be the perfect opportunity for Drew McIntyre to pin Roman in this match. It's not for the title. It just lets it just shows that Roman Reigns is not unbeatable. But they're not going to do that. No, That's what not. I would do. 
We they're not going to do that. We don't want that feud no more. Mm. <laughs> mm. Anybody but Drew McIntyre. Anybody. Oh, what happened with why are you sour on Drew McIntyre? Because uh, <laughs> I'm, so I'm so over Drew McIntyre. But who else do they have? Like, I mean, you know, who, you know, no one's going to beat this. Roman Reigns at this point. Shins is coming. Mm. Tell me this: Who had the worst fall off over the past year? Drew McIntyre or Hangman Adam Page? Jesus, Hangman Adam Page. Yeah, and he's a damn champion. <laughs> Although his promo was his promo was good, and then he should have like cut it halfway through because the, the the latter part of it was kind of like, okay, you need to shut up now. I was with you in the start, but <laughs> you need to bring back uh, cowboy shit and all of that type of stuff. Mm. I, I feel like he's gonna go heel at their show, but obviously we're here to talk about the WWE pay per so <laughs> won't get into all of that. Um, I want to ask you guys, and if you haven't, that's cool. Hopefully, it, we can discuss it, or you guys can discuss it on uh, next week's show. Have either of you guys got to check out the Cody Rhodes Broken Skull interview yet? No, I was planning on checking that out. I just haven't got to it yet. Okay. I want to listen to it, though. No, but I've listened to the drive through and the experience. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that, too. Actually, I was going to ask you the two questions about um, Legacy Pro. First, I'll let you go ahead and plug the Legacy Pro show, and then I'll ask you my two questions. They're talking about Legacy Pro returning to the Buena Vista Banquet Hall and Restaurant, located on 76 in Oklahoma, Wisconsin. Are you talking about Battle for Supremacy 7? Where in the main event is going to be a six man tag with the Brotherhood of Wrestling, myself, Devin August, and Reedus Atlas going against Isaiah Moore, the Legacy Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Jay Manny, and TW3. It's going to be a fantastic time. Tickets are available at legacyprowi.com and facebook.com forward slash legacyprowi. Actually, I was talking about the LPW show taking place at the called Destruction at the Distillery. That's the show I was talking about. I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I was going to ask you, are you going to be um, pursuing any legal action against the other LPW? Uh, I was advised by my head of human resources that I should let that go. You should let it go. They're not legacy. Or they're just LPW. They're live pro wrestling. W- where are they? <laughs> Wisconsin. Stop. Um, you got to be bullshitting me. Fond du Lac, yeah. Oh, st- oh my God! Who runs all who, the names? Who runs that shit? Who runs that shit? Some, some, some dude named Jake. I don't know if you're from like WPW. Just. <laughs> and then I want to ask you another question because I listened to the uh, Cornette, oh Jim Cornette show as well. What does Legacy Pro use? Um, this isn't necessarily anything. If, if you guys. Um, Obviously, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, <laughs> make sure you're notified, give us a thumbs up. We're, get, we're getting off into the weeds a little bit, but I just got to ask, do you guys use rope or cable? Oh, man. Most of the time it's cable. I, I, I rarely came across rope rings. No, I, I, I was really listening to that section of the, the show because I'm like, I don't think I've ever worked with ropes before. It's I always have. been cable, and... I'm just like, damn, that makes sense to hold Bobby Lash. Because we've all, unless you've been living under the rock, you saw the rope break with Bobby Lashley. When you are taught to run the ropes, you're taught to make sure you, which Bobby Lashley didn't do, you're supposed to grab the top rope so that if it fucking breaks, you got something to hold on to as you guide your way down. He hit it just full back and just tumbled out that motherfucker. Thank God he wasn't he wasn't hurt. He could have seriously hurt himself. Like he, Jim Cornette did a good job explaining why it snapped the way it did. What? Hello. <laughs> Whenever y'all get quiet, I'm just like, "Oh shit, did I just drop off again?" That's what I was thinking too. Like, <laughs> something's going on with your element. He's, he's on mute again. Uh-oh. I think you got. <laughs> I had to step away for a second. But uh, I heard everything you were saying about that. So you said you have used rope, Mustafa? You said what now? 
You said you have used rope before, though. I've I've been in a ring that had rope, uh, rope, rope. Oh, uh, that's weird to say. <laughs> uh, uh, versus cable, I didn't care for him. I feel like you don't get the 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 normal spring you would get off a of cable. Yeah, which is what Cornette said. He was like, it made the action scene faster. And then we talk about ring size. Did you have a preference for your ring size? Uh, I like between 16 and 18. I think that's the perfect size. I oh, think 20 really? is just like, it's just a, a recipe to just get blown up for no reason. I don't get what that extra two feet is going to be. I actually prefer 18 to 20 because, I don't know, it just seems like sometimes in a 16 foot ring, it seems like your steps are off a bit. Like, okay, well, let me, let me ask you a question. What, cause what size is Armani's ring? 18. So his, I want to say it's a 18, but the inside of it is 16. Cause you got that big apron. Right. So what I'm saying is, I've spent probably the majority of my time in that ring because that's where we used to do a whole shit ton of our training. So when you're training in an 18 foot ring, which again gives you like, like Mustafa just said, 16 feet of working space inside, you get a certain rhythm down with your, you know, with your, with your steps. So if you work in a 16 foot ring and you take big steps like I do, or like you do when you hit the ropes, that throws your rhythm off a little bit because you're like, Oh shit, you're, you, you miss a step. So you got to come off. I don't, it's just it's hard to explain unless you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, but I feel like that happens initially. But then you're like you're over it. You got it at that point. I feel like if I got into a twenty, I'll be stumbling over my feet. I, mm, I feel like it's the, it's the it's the opposite way for me. If it's in a twenty foot ring, after that after you hit the rope the first time, you adjust. You just take larger steps or whatever. Um, I don't know. It's just to me. I don't. I, a 16 foot I don't not like a 16 foot ring alright yeah I was just curious about those things I thought that was a very interesting discussion it, great point I always heard about the cable and the rope and that the cable was more springy and gave you more leverage and balance and everything like that and as far as getting blown up in the ring I remember that was one of Stone Cold Steve Austin when he came to WWE to the WWF at the time from WCW, he was complaining about the 20 foot ring and the ropes, and he was talking about how hard the damn canvas was. Oof. And he said they didn't, all the wrestlers would complain about the canvas, and that's why so many of the old school wrestlers were all broken up from taking bumps on that hard ass canvas. Yeah, I didn't he know they the were canvas. taking bumps on a fucking boxing ring. Come on, Vince, you got to do better than that. Then we said the ring got softer when Vince started wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mustafa, you remember when we used to wrestle for what MCW and they had the boxing ring? Oh yeah. Remember the first show where they actually had a real ring? Man, you would have thought it was WrestleMania. How everyone was bumping. Dude, that that boxing, if oh my god. Any pro wrestlers out there, if you've never bumped in a boxing ring, it fucking sucks. Oh yeah, that baby do not <laughs> Stop move in any way, shape, or form. And I'm like, how safe is this for boxers? Because if they fall and they hit their head, like that, that's not good. But I, I guess you can't really be boxing with a ring that's moving. Yeah, head. because your footwork and stuff. But yeah, my my guy, like, there's no bounce at all. You just thud. Let's see. And that's why, and that's why Chris Black never leaves his feet. I thought that was hilarious on the Jim Cornette um, experience as well when he was talking about, yeah, if you go back when they was wrestling in those boxing rings, he was like they didn't take a lot of bumps. Mm-mm. He said, like, but when you did see them take a bump, you saw them bounce, not the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But, all right, that's been your uh, WWE WrestleMania backlash predictions. Go ahead and give everybody your social medias and where they can find you at. You can catch me at Xavier Mustafa on Facebook and on Twitter. You can catch my solo podcast at XM Cinema on XM Cinema on Twitter, Facebook, and on Instagram. Uh, we just covered the entire series of Moon Knight. Uh, we are going to be covering uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. 
Uh, then we're going to be taking a very brief break, and then we will be doing Kenobi, which will be on the Disney Plus uh, in the next coming coming weeks. So, okay. you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the Natural Chris Black, and on Twitter at the underscore Natural underscore CB. Uh, be sure to check out my YouTube channel for all your New Japan. I don't know needs. <laughs> I recently put up my wrestling done taco. Duntaku results. A uh, very good show. Juice Robinson joined the Bullet Club. Uh, be sure to t- uh, tune in, listen to that review. A lot of things are coming up for New Japan. They're going to kickstart the summer the ru- off the right way. We got Capital Collision on the 14th of this month. The Best of the Super Juniors start on the 15th of this month. Dominion's on June 1st. The G1 Climax is in July, so I'm I'm going to be busy as far as the New Japan Pro Wrestling reviews go. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you are notified when new videos are uploaded. And hit the fucking subscribe button. Like, my my review of uh, the Duntaco show is doing pretty good. No new subscribers yet, so. Stop. I'm actually going to go listen to that because I wanted to get your thoughts on the Moxley and Filthy Tom Lawler match. That wasn't on this show. Oh, that was. Uh, what show was that on? Um, that was. I thought that was on the Don Taku show. Mm-mm. Moxley wasn't on that show. And I don't know when that was. If okay, well, that might be coming up. Yet, so I'm curious to get your thoughts on that. Maybe I'll get them next week. Okay. <laughs> um, and you catch me at Slamcaster TE78 over on Twitter. Um, also, you can find us wherever you get your podcast from. Make sure that you subscribe to us, leave us a review. Make sure you ring that bell over here. Hit that subscribe button as well so that you're notified and give us a thumbs up. Also, check us out over on Facebook. We have the official Saturday Night Slamcasters page as well as the Saturday Night Slamcasters Slam Board, which is basically like a chat room. Uh, well, not chat room, but it's a page where you guys can interact with us as well as other fans of the podcast. And be sure to check us out over on Discord. We're going to be getting more active over there as the summer goes on. Um, we had we had some plans for the summer, but Microsoft and GoPro decided to um, conspire against us. So <laughs> we'll have to figure something out there. We're going to be going live on video for you guys. But, uh, yeah, Windows 11 does not like to play nice with um, the webcam setup. So... Hopefully, sooner rather than later, we guys can bring you a lot of footage. Also, like I said, we all will be attending the Forbidden Door show out there in Chicago. Hopefully, we can get us some gear made and go out there mobbed up. So if you see us out there, you plan on going to the show, hit us up on social media. Let us know you'll be in the building. Maybe we can link up with you guys and um, say hi or whatever. And also, be checking out the Facebook page because we'll probably have lots of videos and pictures and Who knows what we'll present to you guys from that show. So, yep, be sure to follow us over on social media. Other than that, we up out of here. Holla at your boys. Come get slammed. Peace.